So Gantz is a series that has been special to me for a very long time. I actually read the first few chapters of Gantz way, way back when I first started collecting manga. And since then, it's had a lasting impression on me that has really driven me to seek out what happens in the rest of that story. Now, for some, you'll know that this is quite a difficult thing to do at the moment, at least in a legal sense, because Gantz is currently out of print by Dark Horse in the single volume sets and it's now being printed in an omnibus version which is coming out very slowly but at least steadily for now. So I thought I'd take the time to kind of uh, tell you why I love Gantz so much, why you definitely should be picking up those omnibus versions and why this series, although not for everyone, is one of my personal favourites of all time. <laughs> with Gantz began way back, I'd want to say at least five years ago, early into my manga collecting hobby, I discovered scanned chapters. Now, hold on a second, I clearly love manga, I've clearly gone out of my way to buy this, but at the time I was new to collecting, I didn't really understand the ins and outs of why reading scanlations is very harmful to the community, so we're not going to get into that now, I mean I've got a lot of friends who talk about this topic a lot so I will leave that to them, but all I'll say is I was young, I was naive and the only way that I could really experience this story at the time was through scanlations. So I read the initial scans and what I did read blew me away. It was instantly different to everything else I was reading at the time, so bear in mind that I was reading solely shonen stuff and uh, not really any seinen whatsoever, and this is seinen through and through. To give a quick synopsis of Gantz, I mean it's difficult to do that because it's a bizarre story, but it starts off with two school children who are in a train accident and they die in quite a horrific way. See what I mean about this really dragging you in from the beginning? So although they die in a very horrific and gory way, they then wake up in a mysterious room with nothing but a few other strangers and a huge black sphere. So they're soon told by other members in the room and the sphere itself that they've entered into a contract with an entity that is known as Gantz. As a result, their lives are no longer their own and they have to earn points to get their lives back. So essentially Gantz has given them another chance at life, but in order to get their old lives back and not be bound by this strange game that they have to play every so often, they have to kill aliens. So <laughs> bear with me, this is... You know, this is just the tip of the iceberg. This story, you know, spirals out into a crazy, weird, wacky and wonderful tale. But you have to give it time and you have to get used to the way the mangaka works. So yeah, to start off, the initial story follows these school children in their journey to, you know, discovering what Gantz is, what they have to do. They have to put on these really cool suits, which... I feel like they were inspired by Eva almost and you know a lot of popular manga and anime since have come up with really cool uniforms and cosplay uh, but Gantz is one of my personal favourites so they have these all black suits that have these cool like modules on them and it gives them super strength, makes them slightly more resistant to the damage that the aliens can cause and they also have really cool weapons that Similar to, I suppose, Psychopaths, which is one of my favourite anime of all time, the weapons fire these almost like waves, like they're not bullets, you can't see them, they're invisible, but when you're hit by one of these waves, uh, after a few moments, you explode. So, yeah, if that doesn't make you, you know, really interested to check this out, then I don't know what else to say. For me, the premise of it immediately hooked me in. It's like pure sci-fi through and through. And what I really love about this series, and it continues to surprise you as you go along, is that it's just pure creation. The author clearly just threw in whatever he wanted and, you know, had the best time making it, and that really shows. So through Gantz's 37 volume run, uh, it's sort of non-stop action, but I feel like it is broken up into very clear sections. So as you can see from my shelf, uh, they're all colour-coded, 
slightly differently and each colour seems to be a specific arc of the story. So starting off with the red covers and that is the initial storyline of the characters discovering what Gantz is, fighting a few of the initial aliens and it really sets the scene for the carnage that you can expect. And let me just say there is a lot of gore and nudity in this so it's not for the faint of heart. So next up is the blue arc as I'm going to refer to it and that is really when they kind of hit their stride especially our main protagonist K. He has a lot to learn in Gantz but he becomes very adept at it very quickly and it sort of escalates. Every volume escalates, there's more badass aliens, there's really creative designs and some of them look really simple but they're actually very very dangerous. As the story progresses K gets really used to Gantz and how it works and then the later volumes, without spoiling it, it throws you a huge curveball. There's lots of weird things, I would say, from about volume 21 onwards that don't really make sense. They never get explained, but you've just got to run with it, and that's part of the fun. So you've got aliens, and then the author decides to throw in vampires at one point. You've also got velociraptors and psychics who can use telekinetic powers. You know, it's just batshit crazy, for lack of a better term, and I absolutely love it. I think my favourite arc is probably the point where the team are sent to a different city, and they're not in their own surroundings, and they discover that there are other teams in other cities. I don't really think that that's a spoiler, because this has been out for quite a long time, and there's a lot of adaptations, there's a lot of anime, and... CGI movies which we'll talk about later but that arc in particular is my favourite. I believe it's called the Osaka arc. I could be wrong, let me know in the comments. So on the topic of other adaptations of Gantz, I actually after reading the first initial chapters way back however many years ago it was, I went out looking for more Gantz content and the only real legal Gantz that I could find in our country at the time was the anime and the live action movies. And because I was hugely into anime, I watched some of that, but decided that it wasn't quite for me. I sort of left that and I, I put a pin in it for now. I do still own the anime and I intend to watch it later, but from what I'm aware of and what I read online, it has a different anime only ending, which I wasn't happy with. I didn't want to experience the anime and the story in the way that it wasn't intended. So I thought I would hold off until I could read the manga. At the time I read a lot of what we have in the UK which is Neo magazine. It's a really popular anime and manga magazine and they recommended the live action movies. They said they were really well done, slightly less gory and violent than the uh, manga to try and be more mainstream but very accessible and I thought that they would be quite digestible and I would give those a go. To this day I still really love those. I'm not a huge fan of live action anime or manga adaptations. I mean we've all seen this before and regret watching it. But for sure, I feel like these were very well done. Uh, for people who want to check them out, I'll leave a link in the description below as to where you can buy them. But the first film was just called Gantz, and the second one was called Gantz Perfect Order, and it adapts, I think, up to volume 10, maybe, maybe a little bit further. Uh, but it's really good, really well acted, and if you want an introduction to Gantz and you're a little bit put off by how gory it can be, I mean, these films are still hella gory, but you know, not quite as graphic as the manga. And that's another thing that I need to mention, I think, is the excessive amount of nudity, sex, and violence in Gantz. It's not for the faint of heart. By the time I finally did pick it up and I read more than volume five or six, I had read Berserk, I had read Vagabond, you know, a lot of series that deal with harsh topics and graphic content, and I was quite used to it, so I was expecting it. So I don't want anyone who's watching this whose first manga was My Hero Academia or Naruto or One Piece to think, oh, I want to pick up this next without, you know, some warning from me. As a 27-year-old guy, I don't read very childish things, so I obviously recommend things in my age range. So use your own discretion. And I'm not a huge fan of, you know, overly used sexual themes in manga or anime. Um, but I feel like in this, aside from there's quite a few cover pages in there that's just got, you know, nudity for no reason, 
I feel like it usually had a reason to it uh, because the main character is a teenage boy and he has those emotions and it's all about him kind of he's more interested in finding a girlfriend at times than he is with you know how he's going to survive the next game and I thought that, that was quite good and quite well done and it made sense so yeah if you're not into that sort of thing then beware maybe shy away from this series but I mean if you're watching this review you probably have some idea what to expect by now and finally I just want to say that Gantz isn't without its flaws the characters are very flawed at times, they make really rash and idiotic decisions. There's a lot of characters, so I feel like some are left out a little bit more than others. And I know that some people have a huge problem with the main character, Kay, because, you know, for lack of a better word, he's a dick. He's not a nice guy. He does really horrible things, but I feel like if you keep pushing with it, he does redeem himself. He's an idiot. He's flawed, but that makes him human and that made him likeable for me. I mean, at the beginning, he's definitely not likeable whatsoever. He's a complete arse, but he kind of... Yeah, I feel like as he gains more responsibility and as the story goes on, then he becomes a much more likeable character. And without spoiling it, as per usual, this is a spoiler-free review. Uh, the ending is very, very divisive. I won't say any more than that. All I will say is that I enjoyed it. I thought it was the perfect ending because, as I said, the mangaka did exactly what he wanted with the series and he took it right to the ending that he wanted to do. So we've got to be happy with that. And I know that some people necessarily aren't happy with it, but I actually think the final two arcs are my favorite of the whole series. And you know, it's all just a really great time. So I hope you've enjoyed this review. As I said before, please go and pick up those omnibus versions of Gantz, because at the moment, that's the only way you can experience this series without spending an absolute fortune in buying the single volumes. And I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it just to read it because I waited so long for any kind of re-release and I initially picked up those and I was really happy with them until I found these. So, you know, you can't turn down good manga in whatever format we get it. I mean, maybe you should hold out for a hardcover version like those really nice Berserk ones, but I think that that's a bit of a pipe dream for now. All I will say is it's fantastically gory, it's a really great time, and it was just an absolute binge read for me. I couldn't stop reading it. I read all 37 volumes in about two weeks, and that never happens lately. So thank you so much again for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, you know, do all the usual things that you guys do. And as always, stay awesome.